All right, welcome back. This video, we are going to be talking about creating classes. Now, in my personal recommendation, I'd check out the video on structs because classes are going to be extremely similar. In fact, we're not even going to start from scratch. We're going to take this struct and kind of morph it into a class because it's so, so similar. Now, first, do me a favor. I'd encourage you to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now when it comes to creating classes, here's what you need to do. You need to change this struct keyword to class and anything that is labeled private, it's automatically gonna be private in a class. So you don't need that private keyword. But what you do need is anything that was originally public, you need to label those as public. So what I tend to do is I usually take the private stuff, put it up top, and then I'll label the rest as public, like so. And then just indent it. So that is how you would morph a struct into a class. All you gotta do is change what was once implicitly public and make it explicitly public by labeling it public. And anything that was once explicitly private, you can just let it implicitly be defined as private up at the top. So it's just a little change of words, a little bit of flipping things around, and that's pretty much it. So that is our class. So now I have a class that can be used to create users. And if you're just jumping in and you didn't watch the video on structs, let's just go through the pieces of this. These are known as data members. They're just variables inside of our class. The ones that are private cannot be accessed when you create an object. So for example, this me object, there's no way for this me object to access this status member. So the object can't access the private members directly, but maybe they can indirectly by exposing them through methods. So for example, this status is being exposed through this getStatus method. And we can call that from the object because it's labeled public. So if we go down here, we look at our code, we have me.getStatus. And we should be able to compile and see the output of that. When we run this, you can see the status is gold because it's getting a default value assigned to it directly. Now this is a pretty basic class. It doesn't really do a whole lot. And there are a lot of design techniques and design patterns when it comes to building classes and doing object-oriented programming. This is far from a beautiful, sexy class, but it does get the job done and it allows us to basically encapsulate different variables inside of a particular object. So rather than having separate variables for all of this information, we're able to hide that all within one object called me. And anytime we can scope a variable to something, whether that's an object or a namespace, that's really good because it doesn't pollute the entire environment that it's defined in. So that was a pretty simple video. Hopefully it makes it clear the difference between structs and classes when it comes to syntax. Check out the next video because we're going to get some practice working with objects and it should be pretty fun. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.